forged from decades of technological innovation and combat experience, the M1 Abrams is today's epitome of armored superiority. Famous for its advanced composite armor, powerful turbine engine, and formidable armaments, its story begins in the Cold War, evolving into a platform that has continuously adapted to meet the demands of modern combat. The origins of the M1 Abrams can be traced back to the MBT-70 project, a joint endeavor between the United States and West Germany initiated in the 1960s. Despite its forward-thinking goals, design conflicts and skyrocketing costs led to its cancellation. From an initial $80 million, the MBT-70's costs ballooned to $303 million by 1969, with West Germany's $130 million contribution exceeding the initial budget. Afterward, the U.S. Army pursued the XM-803 project, seeking a cost-effective alternative with American components, aiming for a modest $200,000 savings per tank compared to the MBT-70. These cost-saving measures failed to hold up. Soon, the XM-803's design complexity began to mirror that of the MBT-70, forcing Congress to cut $35.3 million in funding for six XM-803 prototypes, and in December 1971, the project was cancelled in the Defense Appropriation Bill, which allocated $20 million for cancellation costs and another $20 million toward the development of a new tank program. We made another video that we could not release on YouTube due to demonetization and age restriction guidelines. Watch this video and 150 other exclusives hosted on our website, armchairhistory.tv, linked below with a discount. In 1972, Major General William R. Desobri launched the XM-815 project. The goal remained to balance firepower, protection, and mobility, integrating Shabam armor with a 105mm gun, with later versions featuring further advanced armaments. Even with these breakthroughs, the Pentagon faced rising costs, leading to the competitive XM-1 program, encouraging cost-effective innovation. Despite Congressman Les Aspen's concerns over the $3 billion cost, potentially $900,000 per unit with R&D, the Army awarded Chrysler Corporation and General Motors prototype development contracts. By February 1976, Chrysler and General Motors both delivered prototypes for the M1 Abrams, featuring 105mm guns. Tests at the Eberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland highlighted strengths and weaknesses on both designs. General Motors outperformed Chrysler's design with superior armor, fire control, and turret stabilization. Chrysler chose a turbine engine for its lightness and reliability that far outperformed GM's variable compression diesel engine despite its fuel consumption drawbacks. While GM initially held several design advantages and lower cost, the final selection was awarded to Chrysler due to a political decision favoring the turbine engine. Despite GM having the design lead at first, Chrysler's proactive redesign, cost reductions, and commitment to incorporating advanced technology without raising costs or delays proved decisive. Additionally, Chrysler's significant reliance on military contracts highlighted their dedication to tank development, making them a compelling choice for the $4.9 billion XM-1 project. Production of the XM-1 commenced at the Lima Army Modification Center in 1979, with the first vehicles rolling off the assembly line in 1980. These early versions, still under the XM-1 designation, would later be standardized under the official M-1 designation. The tank itself would also have its name attributed to General Creighton Abrams, a noted armor commander and chief of staff for the U.S. Army between 1972 until his death in 1974. The name became official during a ceremony at the Lima plant, where Abrams' widow christened the tank. 
Supposedly, this was done by smashing a bottle of champagne over its gun barrel. These new model M1s entered service with an impressive lineup of features. First was the armor, fortified with revolutionary composite materials, incorporating Chobham armor, renowned for its multi-layered protection. This advanced armor system was adept at mitigating damage from a variety of munitions, including kinetic energy penetrators and chemical energy threats such as high-explosive anti-tank rounds. The armor's composition, a closely guarded secret, includes layers of ceramics, metal, and Kevlar, strategically designed to absorb and dissipate the energy of incoming projectiles, significantly enhancing survivability on the battlefield. At the heart of the M1's firepower was its primary weapon system, the 105mm smoothbore cannon, capable of firing a wide range of ammunition types to engage and destroy enemy armor and fortifications. Complementing the main gun was a 7.62mm M240 machine gun that was mounted on a rail system around the outer edge of the loader's hatch, allowing for flexible positioning and targeting. Another M240 was installed coaxially on the right side, above the gunner's auxiliary sight. Thanks to its multi-fuel gas turbine engine, the M1 Abrams enjoyed an exceptional level of mobility that set it apart from traditional diesel-powered tanks. The turbine engine offered a high power-to-weight ratio, contributing to the tank's ability to accelerate quickly and maintain high speeds, essential for both engaging the enemy and evading threats. This superior mobility enhanced the Abrams' operational flexibility allowing for rapid deployment and repositioning in response to battlefield dynamics. The Abrams' combat effectiveness was significantly enhanced by a vast integration of cutting-edge technology designed to enhance its combat effectiveness. Key among these advancements was the sophisticated fire control system, which ensured high accuracy and target engagement speed. Thermal imaging allowed crew members to detect and engage targets in various conditions, including night and obscured visibility. Additionally, the M1 was equipped with advanced battlefield management systems, enabling real-time data exchange with other units to coordinate maneuvers and attacks efficiently. With its advanced armament, armor, and design, the Abrams tank is a marvel of modern military engineering. And thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Armored Warfare, you can take command of several different Abrams variants, including the M1A1, XM1A3, and the conceptual Abrams X in this free-to-play multiplayer online tactical military PC video game that puts you in control of these and a wide variety of other modern tanks and classes of armor. Select from five different classes of armored vehicles, from MBTs to light tanks to tank destroyers to AFVs and SPGs, and do battle in fast-paced and competitive PvP battles using the mightiest armored vehicles from dozens of countries all around the world, and fight across frozen tundras, sun-scorched deserts, and urban battlefronts. One of my favorite features is Armored Warfare's engaging PvE mode, which is specifically designed to cater to those like me who prefer playing cooperative missions with friends. The game development of Armored Warfare is guided by a loyal online community, ensuring it stays relevant and player-focused, and it's frequently updated. Click on the link in the description below to support our channel, register and download Armored Warfare now and play for free. And don't forget to enter my personal promo code featured on screen and in the description to get a bonus starter pack and a Chieftain MK6. Throughout its service in the 1980s, the M1 Abrams found itself replacing older model M60s in US garrisons across Western Europe and East Asia. M1s were often featured alongside other NATO heavyweights, such as the Leopard 2, as part of military exercises to counter the Soviet Union. Though these exercises didn't compare to real combat experience, feedback from their deployment allowed for newer variants of the Abrams to be created, with each iteration improving and refining the M1's successful base design. The first of these variants was designated the M1A1 and rolled off the production lines in 1985, 
featuring key upgrades to maintain an edge over advanced Soviet tanks, like the T-64A, T-72, and T-80. This included a new 120mm smoothbore gun for superior firepower and enhanced protection through improvements like a long turret with additional stowage and thicker front armor. From 1987, the M1A1 was outfitted with depleted uranium armor, boosting its defensive capabilities significantly. The next variant came in 1986, designated the M1A2. This model came with substantial improvements over the M1A1, focusing on a new fire control system with a powerful computerized core that enhanced the tank's targeting capabilities. Other notable enhancements included a commander's independent thermal viewer, new navigation equipment, and a central digital data bus for managing controls and displays. The M1 Abrams would see its first combat action during the Gulf War's Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Deployed against Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, the U.S. fielded the M1A1 equipped with advanced long dart penetrator Sabo rounds. Nicknamed the Silver Bullet by American tank crews, these rounds were designed to penetrate armor more efficiently, allowing U.S. tanks to destroy Iraqi vehicles at significant ranges. Along with these, many A1s were given first-generation depleted uranium armor that made them virtually impenetrable to Iraqi munitions. Facing outdated enemy tanks, the M1A1 showcased superior capabilities, with no losses to enemy action. Despite 23 being damaged or destroyed, mainly by friendly fire, M1A1s were credited with over 250 enemy tank kills at impressive ranges and under poor visibility. Significant battles included the Battle of Kafchi and the Battle of 73 Easting, where M1A1s demonstrated battlefield supremacy against Iraqi forces. Friendly fire incidents highlighted the need for improved identification measures, leading to the introduction of combat identification panels to reduce fratricide. The M1's next deployment occurred during Operation Enduring Freedom in 2003, with tanks produced after 1998 receiving their first system enhancement package. This upgrade encompassed advanced second-generation forward-looking infrared sights, digital mapping, and command and control capabilities. Enhanced cooling and a thermal management system were added to handle the extra heat from all the new equipment. Improvements to target detection, recognition, and identification were achieved with an additional firepower enhancement package. Upgrades to the fire control system computer included increased memory, faster processors, and a full-color map display, enhancing situational awareness and real-time information exchange within units. An auxiliary power unit developed by the U.S. Army provided the necessary power for these upgrades, with a focus on using various fuels, including high-octane military-grade jet fuel. The armor received a boost with the third-generation steel and depleted uranium layers, significantly increasing protection. Through its tours during Operation Enduring Freedom, the Abrams faced challenges across diverse combat environments, from open desert to urban terrain. Notably, a platoon of M1A1s destroyed seven T-72s south of Baghdad in Iraq, while the Battle of Fallujah in April 2004 introduced the dangers of urban combat. With infantry support, armored vehicles like the Abrams were used to lure insurgents into the open, who would then be engaged by nearby infantry positions. To help adjust to the difficulties of urban combat, the Tank Urban Survival Kit was introduced, featuring reactive and slat armor for RPG protection, an armored gun shield and thermal sights for loaders, a remote weapon turret for commanders, and an external telephone for infantry tank communication. In Afghanistan, the use of armored fighting vehicles were not immediately prevalent due to the country's mountainous terrain, but by January 2011, the U.S. deployed 14 M1A1s to Afghanistan's regional command southwest, 
These tanks were intended to bolster firepower and mobility across the open terrains of Helmand and Nimroz provinces, where their superior firepower and enhanced protection aimed to support infantry operations and help American forces better adapt to Afghanistan's challenging combat environments. The M1 Abrams line has also seen significant action in more recent conflicts. In the Yemen Civil War, Saudi-led coalition forces utilized the M1A2 Abrams tanks in their military actions against Houthi rebels. Operating in the rugged and arid terrain of Yemen, the M1A2s played a crucial role in the coalition's ground offensive, even when faced with constant challenges from Houthi anti-tank guided missiles. As part of the ongoing Russo-Ukraine war, over 31 M1 Abrams tanks were provided to Ukraine as part of a military aid package on October 16th, 2023. The initial batch of these tanks had already been delivered by September, indicating a staggered arrival to support Ukrainian forces. In November, pictures of an M1A1 near Kupiansk were circulating online. The extent of its involvement in Ukrainian operations was unclear, however. As of early February 2024, another sighting suggested the involvement of an M1A2 upgraded with the second iteration of the System Enhancement Package operating in Avdivka. On February 26th, a significant development occurred when a Ukrainian M1A1 was immobilized and destroyed by the Russian 15th Motorized Brigade, using a Piranha FPV drone followed up by an anti-tank guided missile. This marked the first time Ukrainian forces had lost an Abrams in the field. While the Abrams is considered impressive internationally and domestically, it also shares a number of challenges and controversies. Beyond its advanced capabilities, the M1 line carries a steep price tag, with modernization programs like the M1A2 SEP V3 upgrades having a cumulative cost exceeding $4 billion. Operationally, it's vulnerable to anti-tank weapons like the Russian Kornet, necessitating costly armor enhancements. Its heavy armor and fuel consumption also impose logistical challenges, requiring a substantial support network for refueling and maintenance. Another issue is the global export of Abrams tanks to nations such as Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, and Ukraine, which raises concern over escalating arms races and the potential for sensitive military technology falling into adversarial hands. The proliferation of these tanks have the very real possibility of tipping the balance when it comes to regional security dynamics and defense. While America's allies make use of older generation models, the US military continues to fine tune the tank's existing framework. Over the years, the Abrams has seen several significant upgrades aimed at enhancing its combat effectiveness and survivability on the modern battlefield. Several iterations of system enhancement packages saw improved armor, electronics, and better auxiliary power units supplement the existing design. The newer generation SEP V3 also began integration of improved communication and networking along with the ability to deploy smart munitions such as airburst rounds. The SEP V4 was planned as an ambitious upgrade to introduce next-generation technologies, including an active protection system to intercept and destroy incoming anti-tank missiles and rockets, a new laser rangefinder, and an advanced multi-purpose ammunition. However, the SEP V4 project faced cancellation leading to a shift in focus toward developing the next iteration of the Abrams, the M1E3. This newest model is envisioned to incorporate many of the advancements proposed for the SEP V4, alongside additional innovations to augment the tank's lethality, protection, and network-centric warfare capabilities. Though details are sparse and development ongoing, the ME3 represents the next step in the evolution of the Abrams, ensuring that it remains a dominant force on the battlefield well into the future.